All right, this is the follow up, and we are following up today on a live video from uh, 2020, from last year on Georgia Space Chat. The live video was entitled Subbing. And my guest today on the follow up is the great Sue Williams. Sue, thank you so much for making yourself available, and welcome to the follow up. Thank you for having me, George. Oh, it's my pleasure. Absolutely. All right. So for those watching, for those listening, let me give you a little bit of background into how uh, Sue and I met. Um, and then we'll get into the subject, which is we're going to talk about subbing today. Um, I Before the pandemic, I was doing the show Ain't Too Proud. And Sue is one of my subs at Ain't Too Proud. Now, keep in mind that this particular show requires the bass player to pretty much play nonstop for two and a half hours. It's, it's a grueling and demanding show. And uh, the big payoff is that, you know, you get to play two and a half hours of Motown, which means two and a half hours of mostly James Jameson's lines. Um, so, Sue, let me ask you, let me, let's get right into it. Maybe you can give the audience sort of an idea of, of how you got started with the whole subbing thing. Well, I think, you know, I knew people who were playing on Broadway yeah. and I had musical theater experience over the years of playing in community theater and summer stock theater, just people, you know, just doing, you know, I really come from doing gigs. So right. in the course of doing gigs, people would say, hey, can you can you do this gig over here or can you do this gig out of town over here? So I had musical theater experience um, and then I through some of the people that I knew who were playing on Broadway, I, I inquired and, and I, I tried to uh, get recommended. And then I reached out to people like yourself and, um, you know, for situations that I thought were appropriate for me and good for me Excellent. that I could succeed in. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And Fantastic. luckily a couple people, and I also in the course of playing musical theater in, uh, outside of Broadway, um, I had people subbing for me. So then when they were playing on Broadway, they said, oh, Sue, could you sub for me? So that's how I, I got a, a toe in there. And yeah, 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 yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. And that's something that, you know, I talk about a lot in terms of building your network and, and making sure that you know where people are playing, what they are doing, you know, be invested, be interested um, and, you know, keep in touch. I, my story is very, very similar. I, I had you know, what would be the equivalent of a Rolodex of, of 10 years worth of freelance work and um, basically just called people and said, listen, I want to get closer to this very much like yourself. So let's let's uh, let's try to be let's get into into ain't too proud because that's that's really I mean, that's where that's what we do. You know, uh, what's your take on on subbing? What what are some of the difficulties? Um, you can definitely use Into Proud as an example, you know, knowing full well that every show is different. But what are some of the, the points of focus, so to speak, when it comes to subbing? Well, um, you know, I, I, ha I always think of the great Milt Hinton. Milt Hinton told me, uh, I got to hang out with Milt years ago when mm. Milt was with us and uh, do some things at Lincoln Center with him and such. And he, he used to hold court and Milt said, we bass players are like Atlas holding up the world. Mm. That's, what he, that's what he told us. Uh, so I think of Ain't Too Proud, boy, I think of that. That's like, uh, I oh, mean, yeah. um, that's a demanding bass book for sure. And uh, subbing for you, Georgia, made me a better player playing oh, it. Oh. So I really appreciate the uh, opportunity and, oh. um, and learning the music made me a better player. And um, of course, there's a lot of just physical endurance involved in that particular yeah. book. Um, yeah, but the, last, you know, the last 20 minutes are, <laughs> are a lot. <laughs> yeah, one, one sub said terrifying, you know? That's one sub's, uh, not, the, not the bass sub, but another sub. But, uh, you know, I think subbing Subbing for me was a way to get my foot in the door. And right. um, I know that um, if you have a Broadway chair or any chair, could be a college production, anything, um, you need a sub. A good sub is, is, is really super important. And people who have a chair, 
want, uh, they need to take off and make their orchestra conductor and the orchestra, fellow orchestra musicians happy. So, um, yeah. you know, it's important to have a good sub. And I enjoy the challenge of subbing. Mm. I enjoy the challenge uh, of, uh, you know, perfecting the music. And um, it does take a lot of time to learn a show. I was thinking about it. Somebody asked me something about learning a show. How long does it take? Which, of course, is dependent on the show. But you could easily spend a month yeah. working very hard learning, yeah. learning a show. So yeah, no doubt, no doubt. This, but uh, I'm very appreciative of all my opportunities to sub. I learned a lot on every subbing situation, and I became a better player because of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, I I noticed that. Uh, um, I noticed that as well for from my own playing. Um, that is definitely something that you can take from it and um and sort of apply in your freelance work just as much as 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 the musical theater work of course yes. with the you know parameters or with the with the caveat of in musical theater y you are more likely to work with a conductor right. you know first and first and foremost but then in the freelance work you might be working with a singer or with a leader with an instrumental leader who phrases a certain way who perhaps where there's a perhaps you know a little bit of push and pull when it comes to time you know that's that's very comparable in my opinion so yes um yes. now let's go into into the pit of of into proud we're at the imperial theater take the audience into your process of preparing to be there of you preparing mean preparing to be there like you're preparing to be there or you're you're getting ready to play let's start with preparing to be there and then uh let's fast forward into playing the show like your first show or second or what which whichever you want to use as an example <laughs> well let me start with um you know i'm i'm friends with clayton craddock the drummer okay. for the show a long time i've done a lot of gigs with him and and um when I when he told me he was doing the the, the show as it was in in uh, development and such, I thought, oh, I said I, that would be a great show for me because I've been playing this Motown music and been been into Jamerson for since I was so young. So mm -hmm. I knew that I knew that I could play that music authentically and do a good job. So that led me to reach out to you george and say right. we were both had subbed on bronx tale for frankie right. Centeno, and right. um i said you know uh we both I, i'm gonna reach out to george and, and thankfully you were open to it and uh, i got the opportunity so um thank you very much first oh, of all of course yeah yeah of course and, Don't and be... you know of that's course. i think that's an important part i think to under to understand like um to put yourself in a situation where you feel you can succeed mm. yeah, because I haven't gone after certain situations that I could have because I didn't think I was the right player. Mm. Interesting. You know, Interesting. so yeah. I don't think on a Broadway level, you, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're, you're not going to knock it out of the park. Right. 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 So, um, in the past when, you know, um, things didn't didn't seem like that for me I, I i i didn't put myself in that situation so i knew i had a feeling i i'm going to be great at this show i have a feeling so um you get the book you know you you go down to the show and you, you start putting your book together print it out and and start to uh listen to the audio recording mm -hmm. now um i you you were one who hit me to you use the audio more than a conductor video you focus oh, yeah. more on that which which always stuck with me about you know that's so important to have a uh, good audio with um a, the bass signal is up high in the mix because right. you also gave me a beautiful recording where the bass is really prominent so you really right. hear it so um you're listening at home along to the audio recording and the score and making your uh, marks and putting in all your cues and trying to figure out what's the what's the cue out for this vamp you know is it a dialogue thing or you know they they smack the gavel and then you're mm. then you shift gears right oh yeah that's a or, good point that is a very good point yeah so you're trying to do all that before I meet up with you in the in the pit there and um, trying to figure out what those little lead-in phrases are I can't even remember the name of the piece now but uh mm. Uh, you know all the little, all the little cues where you're getting in and out of of the vamps and um, 
so I started to mark up my music, put my book together, play through it, of course, uh, listen to the recording incessantly. Mm. Um, you know, I would listen in the car, I would listen in the house, uh, yeah. list, listen walking down the street. Then I would start to make a list of questions. Yeah. yeah. So I have my notebook and I have a list of questions to ask you when I yeah, get yeah. there. Like, yeah. Yeah. How, how are they thinking of this or how is this timed or, you know, what kind of indication am I getting from the conductor at, before we lead into that where I have to play that lead in line, you know? So all those details, then I think it really comes down to co sitting in the pit next to you yeah, yeah. and um, listening to the show while you're playing the show and um, seeing if there's anything different that uh, I'm, I'm looking at the music um, and you might be, um, have developed the part a bit right. to where there's variation. Right. Right. Cause that's what happens with all the rhythm section parts, right? They yeah. get, they get developed. So sometimes you're making notes like uh, George is doing this, you know, he's not necessarily following the ink here. So <laughs> I was just going to ask because <laughs> I don't follow the ink a lot. <laughs> so let me ask you, you know, uh, are you someone who transcribes or are you someone who memorizes? Do you have a preference? Uh, like, w were, were you the one who, you know, transcribed the lines to get them down? You know, uh, is that how what is your process with that? Or when you when you're facing that situation, like what do you do? Well, I did transcribe mm. your, your mm. lines and and, you know, we all we know that there's certain sections um, in the music where you have uh, chord symbols and slashes for yeah. 16 bars. And, yeah, 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 yeah. But you're moving around and playing all this stuff and 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 uh, p playing fills. I mean, um, I want to sound my job is to sound like you. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And the orchestra is used to hearing you play eight shows a week. Yeah. And um, and I love the way you play the music. Thank you. A and uh, <laughs> super nice. <laughs> I, I said, wow, I got to check that out. So I started writing it out. I started transcribing. Mm. So I did a lot of transcribing. And then I would sort of uh, my music book would be um, sort of the uh, Randy Lando calls it the arts and crafts project, you know, oh, where yeah. you're where you're uh, okay, we're reading these uh, eight bars of the ink, but then uh, I really dig this fill that George is doing. So I wrote it out and I printed it out and then I'm cutting that piece and taping and gluing it into the music. Smart. And then yeah. um, some pieces I did just print a new, there's one piece, the opening of act two, I just printed out my, I wrote a whole new piece for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause I felt like that was the best way for me to read it. And I remember Larry came in, he's like, that doesn't look like the music. And he walks in the door. I'm like, well, that's my music. You know, I'm like, yeah, that doesn't look like the music because it's my particular part that I wrote out, but it is the music, but, yes. uh, so yeah, that's, I did do a lot of that. Now I will say, and, and this is, I think a good thing to mention, when I was subbing for Frankie, and you would have a good perspective on this too, uh, in the Bronx Tale show, mm. there was the one song that was a, a male-female duet. To me, it was like the Marvin Gaye, Tammy Terrell yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, for it was sure. a 12-8. It was in uh, D-flat, if I recall. That's correct, yeah. And the it, just the written ink was challenging there was the things high up on the um above the 12th fret and then you know drops down and and um and i'll tell you when i sat in the pit and listened to frankie play that i, I, I was like oh my gosh it was so beautiful yeah he he trans uh formed that piece of music into to the the such a work of art and i was blown away by how he played it now, in that particular case, I, I didn't transcribe what he did because um, I didn't think I could, I didn't feel comfortable playing it. Like mm. I didn't feel comfortable playing it technically. And, and I knew, okay, he's playing the ink, but then he's embellishing and he, he's embellishing here and he's filling here and he's adding rhythm and notes here. 
I understood the spirit with which he was playing the book. And um, I was really concerned with nailing the mm -hmm. important parts. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I chose a more conservative, I, I split the difference between right. what was the ink and what he was doing. Right. Because I thought technically, I said, I don't want to get too adventuresome because uh, not, you know, being a sub and not having all that rehearsal and, and uh, not being in there uh, super often. Right. Right. Uh, I thought this is what's going to work best for me. So d different situations, I guess, just to say different situations, you you approach differently. Yeah. And that's that's a very, very smart approach. That is a very smart approach is, you know, having a clear understanding that number one, every show is different. And th that is at least in my experience, I have not seen a show. I have not seen two shows that are the same. Right. Um, and then the other thing which kind of relies or which is uh, based on num the, the first point is that since every show is different, your approach towards subbing needs to be finely tuned to that particular show, to the music, to the environment, whatever it might be. You know, sometimes you have to memorize stuff. Sometimes you have yeah. to write stuff out. Um, sometimes you have to set your instruments, you know, in a certain way in order to get the choreography of picking one thing up, putting another thing down, you know, right. that whole thing like that. And it really, it helps to have a clear understanding that every show is different and therefore your approach towards learning the material needs to be adequately changed or needs to be flexible. Like you cannot necessarily be too rigid about it. Um, definitely uh, yeah, a lesson point. that I learned, you know, that uh, um, my m most difficult subbing experience was Mamma Mia. Uh, that's, uh, you know, simply because I had to, for the first time, perhaps in my life, I was getting nervous to the point of sweaty palms and, you know, dry mouth and just r super distracting, you know. So every show is different. Now, that was your preparation, right? So now you have prepared it, right? Um, take us into your first night, your first show. And I know this is this is a tricky question because it's super uncomfortable and it's nerve wracking and yeah, all of that. It, it is. I always call it the three hour heart attack. So right. take us into your first show. What's happening? What do you do? Well, um, you know, like any big gig you're doing any big concert or anything you're thinking about it from the time i mean actually obviously with, the, with this it, you're building up to it you're thinking about it we, weeks in advance but obviously the day of you're thinking about it from the time you wake up oh, yeah. um so i i really try to set myself up for success like all around like i plan my day ahead of time so that um i make sure that you know everything falls in place easily so it mm. you know um hopefully it's not the the day you get some uh difficult stressful situation to deal with but um you know in some one simple thing is even um you know i like um to have my second cup of coffee uh, but I won't have a second cup of coffee that morning because my adrenaline, my nervous system's already on hyperdrive, mm. right? So right. Um, I definitely, right. I watch what I eat because I know I have a sensitive stomach. So things like that, I, um, I have a checklist. I actually make a checklist and print it out of everything I need to bring to the show in advance. So yeah. for instance, I always use my own book. Um, because I've made all the marks and all the cues in my book. And that's what's going to help me to succeed the best is to read my own music. Yeah. So I, I, I'm on my checklist. I'll have um, do, bring a guitar strap or two mm -hmm. guitar straps, right? right. Because um, that's a personal thing mm -hmm. and that's going to help or maybe not help. So I bring my own, um, you know, if, if, uh, I play the German bow. So if I need the, my German, the sh sh bow at the show is French. So I am going to bring my, things like that. I need my guitar picks if there's right. picking, um, anything like that. I, I'm going to bring a music stand, uh, a battery powered music stand clip on light. If that helps me, I need more light or anything that will, I think will help me to, um, 
just have all my ducks in a row. Right. You know, um, so I'll, I'll I try to line up everything through the day. You know, I have my um, my lunch with me or my dinner, whatever. I just try to make, I get there early. I always leave early because I don't want the stress of ever being late. And yeah. I'm like that for every gig. Right. You know, if I, I'm going to be playing at church on Sunday and I'm the first one there, you know, so yeah, I yeah. just I just like to be early and relaxed about it. Um, and then I think it's always um, nerve wracking um, getting used to the um, in-ears or the mix, but yeah. from several times visiting you in the pit, I've gotten used to your mix. So I make sure I know how can I recall George's mix when I'm there? I make sure I know that things like that. Right. Um, and yeah, the, having the checklist helps and um, you know, maybe packing up my, um, knapsack the night before with the music stand light and the, the black shoes or whatever the heck it is I need to bring yeah. the black shirt or whatever. Um, and, and then I think it's all the preparation that you've done that mm. gives you the confidence to um, have your best shot, you know? So, I mean, I really firmly believe in uh, meditation um, to uh, that's another reason why I like to get there early and yeah. be in the pit early and just center myself and you know so i if you do yoga during the day i recommend that um mm -hmm. that can be a good thing just to because it is a very nerve-wracking high stress thing all yeah. the more so with with rhythm section instruments you know there's only one drummer there's only one bass oftentimes there's can be one guitar one keyboard but oftentimes there's multiple yeah so uh and and those people sometimes will cover each other's parts or something like that but there's only one of us yeah for sure so for sure. um anything like that that's gonna help me um you know to to be centered be relaxed because obviously it's not a relaxing no it's... uh event it is it is the hardest gig in town i mean there's, yeah. there's there's just no two ways about that you you have to you have to play at, at album quality and you don't get a rehearsal and, right. and everything, everything has to be first take and it's got to be perfect. And on top of that, it's, it, it cannot sound like you. It has right. to sound like the shareholder, right? right? So it's, I always liken it to, there's this great Austrian writer by the name of Thomas Bernard and, and, and he, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but he says the, the, the human condition is to know that you're going to fail at the human condition and still try. Right. So <laughs> keeping that in mind, you go into a subbing job knowing full well that, you know, you will probably not be a carbon copy. Right. right. But whatever you need to do and however you need to prepare to be as close to that is exactly what you need to do. If that includes not thinking of it as i'm not uh, you know not thinking of it in terms of i'm not going to be you know a carbon copy if if, if it includes i'm going to be a carbon copy you know in your mind at least then by all means do that you know whatever whatever it takes you only get one chance that's you know that's the gig so to speak um and that that that's really where a lot of the difficulties lie you know now let me just ask you real quick because um Ain't Too Proud is specific when it comes to the instruments we're playing, right? Um, we play the, the five string precision and then we play the, the white, uh, whatever it's called, Kent based, uh, sort of, it's which is basically a precision. Um, but, you know, the setup is, of course, favors me because I'm usually there, right? How do you deal with that? Um, knowing, f you know, and maybe I should make this disclaimer to the audience that. I do like a fairly medium to high setup, what the strings are concerned, what my action is concerned. Um, you know, and on top of that, I have the, the foam mute under the strings, right? So it's not like your everyday setup. How did you deal with that? And how, how does that work out for you? Well, when I came down to the show to watch you play it in the pit and mm. I got an opportunity to play those instruments, right? I, uh, the 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 bass that's in the pit there um, has such heavy gauge strings on it, it that I, I I was not used to those strings at all. 
Mm. Um, I had never played those strings before. So what I did was I went home and I bought the strings and I put it on my bass at home yeah. and adjusted yeah. the neck. And I said, you know, in order for me to have a fighting chance, I need to practice with this type of setup because it's, it's very different for me. And, uh, um, I grew, I grew to enjoy it and like it, you know, it, it was different and, yeah. um, but the sound is great. And that was one, one thing that yeah. I did. Yeah. 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 That, that makes a lot of sense. I always thought that, you know, having the higher action, having the heavy, heavy gauge strings, there is a certain amount of, um, dynamic range that I can get out of that. Right. And that's just to give you an idea of like why I am doing this like this, there is some thought behind it. It's not just that you know, I power through the instrument. I do not, like I'm, I'm in reality a very dynamic player, yet in order to get those dynamics out, I need that action. I need, you know, those strings to be at a certain, to have a certain tension. That's really, yeah. what, you know, where that comes yeah. from. Um, yeah, and it works well, and and, uh, and it's a beautiful sound that you're, that you're getting. So yeah, it wasn't something you. that I was used to, but um, I, I, I got used to it. Oh yeah. Best, best I could, and I think if I hadn't, done that got you know practiced like that at home yeah yeah, with, yeah, the, yeah. with that that gauge string and that kind of tension yeah yeah i think that's that's a very good point and that's you know perhaps for the audience out there uh, a really good thing to consider that um it does tie in with you have to sound like the chair holder right and whatever it it takes that you can do for yourself to sound like the chair holder when you're preparing the show um, you know, when you're working on it, um, you perhaps you should do that. And, and that's exactly why, you know, why it worked out for you. So that's, that's fantastic. Now, let me ask you this, cause this is an interesting, uh, interesting point. You now have been accepted as a sub, right? You're designated, you're approved or whatever the, whatever the, the, um, the status is. Um, what's your take on, on keeping the, material fresh because especially as a sub you don't always play you don't play that many shows right you play every now and then what do you do to keep material fresh or is there a process what is your take on that i i definitely focused on the most challenging numbers mm -hmm. uh, to play so so the the what was it number 14 the beginning of act two mm -hmm. that one i would regularly play yeah and I, I mean, just to back up, I, I would um, play through the show regularly so that yeah. if if I got a last minute call, yeah. I wasn't like, oh, my God, I'm, I haven't looked at the show in, in, in two weeks or something. I, I didn't want that to happen. So I would um, play through it um, from time to time. And then the ones that were um, specifically technically challenging to me and um, endurance Oh, yeah. Wise, challenging to me. I made sure that I, I kept those in my uh, practice queue, you know? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Let me let me also ask you uh, this question. Um, and this is an awesome opportunity for me because I don't I never get to to talk to another bass player about subbing or anything like that. Like that, that's just not what we do. We usually work. <laughs> that's it's our, you know, baby. But I know you. I know you have a reputation as being an excellent sub. Oh, thank George. you. That's that's super nice. Yeah, yeah. I I try to. I try to. I definitely uh, made that a focus point for a number of years. You know, and 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 I was I very much like you. I like the challenge. It it. Uh, I always liken it to. And I, I'm gonna get to my point in a second. But I liken it to. I read this this interview by nathan east where he kind of described the studio scene in la and, and he was like you go in you kick ass you leave right and i thought oh that i like i really like that because it's it's so to the point you know and 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 so i go in and then i try to be like the tasmanian devil of kicking ass uh, in the base chair <laughs> inside <laughs> so i'm just like all over the place playing the music correctly and then I leave and I disappear again right um, not because I'm, I'm afraid or, or anything like that or because I don't want to stand out I stand out already as I am anyway right that's just me but um, I like to be that person that's reliable 
and that takes this challenge and kind of makes it makes it something like works with it right um yeah i love being being a sub i it's 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 it is a great challenge and i'm I, i'm very passionate about it nevertheless um le let's get to um what was the point that i was trying to make um or the question i i wanted to ask you um uh okay so we talked about yeah this was it um your preparation on the day of the show um the whole yoga bit i thought that is a very very good idea right the whole centering yourself and really seeing it ahead of time now once in and you mentioned this now also a couple times the endurance factor of into proud right is there anything that that you can share um that perhaps will help people understand what that really means um and and perhaps you know give them some sort of cl clues as to how to put that into their routine into practicing routine or preparation routine well i have to say um that ain't ain't too proud in particular is is one of the most uh, challenging shows I've played yeah. period. And, um, every show is challenging in its own way, of course, but, um, the, the, um, the, it, the, if you haven't, if you've heard the show, uh, seen the show, um, then, then you probably realize, but for those people who haven't, the, the base is to me, the base is it's truly Atlas holding up the world. I mean, oh, yeah. the base, the, the base is the um, what's 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 the what's the right term? I can't think of the right term, but it's 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 the probably the most challenging book in the whole show, oh, and yeah. um, it is it is just the um, doing all the vamps. Yeah. The base the base plays. The temptations are arguing on stage, and the bass is vamping with the click. And um, you're like, "Could you stop arguing?" Because my left hand, you know, uh, it's like. <laughs> so the bass really has a lot of responsibilities within that show of playing all these vamps when when everyone else is, um, you know, eating Twinkies in the pit or whatever, yeah. you know. So exactly. it's like. <laughs> That so, is true, actually. That's, and it, that's and, not, and we're that, not making this up. <laughs> it makes the endurance, and some of those vamps are, are hard on the left yeah. hand. And so, um, you know, endurance-wise, your muscles, you have to really build that up. Um, so practicing the show um, and learning it, it's um, not only are you learning the notes and the, how you're going to finger it, which position you're going to finger it in. Um, mm -hmm. And seeing you play the show gave me some different uh, fingering options that, that uh, I adopted that made it mm. work better for me. So you try to, of course, absorb everything you can from the, the person who's, uh, who's playing this show. Mm. Um, but the, um, when you're practicing at home, you're, um, you know, I run each song individually. And, and then you're, you know, woodshedding each song, woodshedding the sections of the song, the difficult passages, maybe slowing it down, et cetera, get it, getting that, mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, and then um, I would practice the first act in its entirety. And then I would practice the second act in its entirety, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say this morning I'm practice the first act, you know, I'm done this afternoon or tonight, I come back and play the second act. Then you get to the point of where you're practicing the show as it as it runs down. Right. So that in that part of that is your um, your fine tuning and going over every detail, and then you're working on not only your mental focus and concentration, um, but your physical endurance. There so you you're practicing the endurance, and you're and you know again one one tune at a time, one tune at a time one act at a time and then the whole thing as a, even with the appropriate amount of intermission break for yourself because that's what you're up against and yeah. those vamps the, again the bass has such a difficult role in your show um that you need to put yourself in the exact position of i'm playing this vamp all by myself you know everyone else comes in okay that song ends i'm immediately into the next thing it's mm -hmm. it's bass and shaker for two and a half minutes yes. while the temps are arguing on stage, right? 
So, uh, and then you just really, uh, so you're gradually building up your, again, your mental endurance and your physical your endurance. Physical. Yeah, 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 very much so. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. And that's, that's, that's so important for people to hear and, and understand that. Now, keeping, keeping in mind, like, yes, we're talking about an outlier of a show. Ain't Too Proud, you know, is somewhat of a, uh, is an extreme because usually you don't get the bass to hold down all right. of the incidental music, all of the underscoring and, and all of that stuff, right? Right. At some point, you know, usually, um, again, in quotes, we get to put the instrument down and, you know, or just exhale for a second with Ain't Too Proud. That is just not the case. That's, right. you know perhaps also a great tribute to the artist the artistry and genius of of james jameson because he was motown he was the motown sound you know yeah um so i always i always saw, saw it that way to be honest so i never really tried to get the book to be anything less um right. for me it was always like well you might as well be playing all the time because the minute you hear motown you hear jameson and and that's just what it is you know um there's there's no two ways about that um yeah. so it's exciting to to be to be in that role it's 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 thrilling it's exciting it's extremely satisfying to play oh, yeah. to play that music and and to play your lines george oh too. thank you I, I really appreciate that now it's it is once in a life it's the show is a once in a lifetime type situation i was talking to a friend yesterday and and I likened it that because there's talk about you know uh, either Tommy or Quadrophenia coming back on Broadway or something like that you know I was like well the, the next best thing I can think of really is one of those shows you know recreating the John Entwistle parts from the Who you know because that's there you have like a very similar iconic bass player really putting his stamp putting his personality his sound into the music and without those ingredients the music would not have sounded the way it, it does right um you know keeping in mind that with 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 jameson you have this this player who just influenced the sound of an era and, and and therefore the sound of the you know british revolution uh british um what was it called invasion <laughs> you know and and made you know is is now part of our collective consciousness Right. Right. There's just no no two ways about that. So the other thing that I also found, and I would be curious, maybe as a last point, I would be curious to s get your perspective on that. Um, how do you deal with the importance of Jameson in the bigger picture? Um, let me just give you a little bit of, of, of a breakdown the way how I, s how I saw it. I noticed that when I was playing, when we started the show in, in Berkeley, Berkeley Repertory Theater, um, and we were doing the opening to My Girl, right? And I start with the intro. And the audience goes nuts, right? And it dawned on me, like, oh, I can't, I can't even as much as hesitate because they are going to hear it. Everybody in that audience has an idea of what that song means to them, has heard it, has peripherally heard it, has listened to it, you know, in how how much depth as as possible um how do you deal with that how as a sub you know knowing full well that this is somewhat of an extreme situation but i think it can still be applied to a general idea of what subbing is like like how do you deal with recreating parts that are this iconic and that i just will preface before i answer that's a stressful part of the show you know yeah. boom but again, just us, just yeah. the bass. Nobody else. Yep. All yep. ex very exposed for yeah. the bass in that part of the show. Um, you know, it, it is a great responsibility and a great honor to, yeah. to be playing these parts. And, yeah. um, and I, I fell in love with these parts. I, I, I remember where I was. I lived uptown, you know, I was in my 20s. I just, I heard, I was really getting into Marvin Gaye and I started hearing these parts and then, I was like, wow, you know, what is that? Let me figure out what, what this person's doing. And mm -hmm. um, uh, so it, you, 
I mean, the, these songs are the, the fabric uh, of American culture. These songs, like, did we grow up with these? These, I mean, these songs, anybody learning these songs today, I would, like a student or something, a younger person, I would just say, you know, you're well served to learn this music because I said, you're going to hear it the rest of your life. Yeah. I said, this is, this is, so the, it is a great, um, you, having listened to the music so much, having absorbed James Jamerson's lines, you do really want to project uh, as best you can uh, the, the feel that he, that he played those. Even those simple yeah. lines, it could be simple, but you really want to absorb the nuance and the feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. the accenting, yeah. the dynamics like you're talking about. So I yeah. think that, uh, it's incumbent on uh, whoever is playing that music to uh, really... Um, do their homework and um you know obviously we've listened to this stuff our whole lives um but you want to go back before you play you want to go back and really absorb it again and really um yeah. listen thoroughly and make sure you you're doing the best um representation to honor this classic music and this genius bass player that we've we've all um loved yeah 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 most yeah. definitely most definitely well listen on that note i think this is this this is a great note um to to finish this up and wrap this up so uh once again thank you so much for being here today um you know i hope that uh you know any time in the future at this point <laughs> we get to do this again <laughs> i don't i don't want to i don't want to put like any kind of 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 time frame on it because i don't have one like you know we we don't know when we are going to come back like that's that's the reality yeah. of the of the situation um you know but we, but but thank you for having me george and and um you know thank you for the opportunity to sub and and be a part of a great production and i i learned so much from every situation i learned so much from um subbing for you and oh. maybe a better player so i'm i'm really grateful for that and i it really I, I i i had to elevate my whole game to 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 fill your shoes so it is exciting and uh the music is, is is wonderful to play you know not every show we love the music like this yeah yeah yeah, yeah for so, sure and i would just uh say to anyone out there i went and saw the show in in previews oh excellent with my excellent. son and and um i would just say um you know, if you haven't checked out the show, um, Otis Williams' story is incredible. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, God bless him for writing the book. And, and yeah. uh, he's been there at the theater, right? Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Go you see, know, the, sh go see you know, the show, everyone. I had him. Yeah, thank you for, for that plug. Go see the show, everybody. This is important. <laughs> but I had him on one of these follow-up videos. Oh, nice. Yeah, I talked to him about what it was like, you know, working with Jameson. And he, he was like, he he broke it down. He knew Jameson before there was a Temptations. Like he, when it was still Otis and uh, whatever, whatever the other, the other name was that they had, that he had for his singing group. Um, he knew Jameson back then, right? Uh, when Jameson was predominantly playing upright bass. So this is how far back he, he goes with him. Interesting. And, and uh, yeah, and, and I remember this very, very clearly because we did have uh, a bunch of musicians, especially in L.A., we had a bunch of musicians come check out the show, right? Um, and so Leland Sklar comes by, right? And he has like a real emotional experience. Like he was taken by it, right? Um, Bobby Watson came by who played on um, I Want to Rock With You, Michael Jackson's Rock With You, right? Uh, and who was also the, the bass player for... Shaka Khan, um, Rufus and Shaka Khan, right? That Bobby Watson. Where Dean White came by. Right? Mm, nice. They were all really very, very much taken. They all had like an emotional experience to, to hearing our recreation of that sound, right? Um, and uh, where was I going with this? Um, huh, now I lost but my You had Otis on the show. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and 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 yeah, and so I talked to all of them and I talked to Otis in, in LA as well. And, and you know, I, I, I said, listen, Otis, I got to tell you, you recorded with my hero, with James Jameson, you know. And without me prompting him, like, he immediately, he immediately got really serious and he was like, man, I wish he was still around. 
And that floored me. That that floored me. I mean, Jameson passed away when in the eighties at some point, so it's been a minute, right? Um, but uh, he was such a strong character for for the Temptations for the entire Motown roster. Um, yeah that they really appreciated what he was doing, you know, and they really knew him inside and out. And they knew not to mess with him because he would deliver a product that made them shine, right? Yeah. Uh, so it, it, there, was, there was this incredible sense of uh, gratitude coming from Otis, incredible sense of reverence, um, yeah. respect, uh, all of yeah. that, right? And and I didn't prompt any of it. Like I just said, listen, you guys work with him. You know, this I I wanted to acknowledge that. You know, this is this is a uh, this is a hero of mine. You know. Yes, yes, uh, a hero of a soul. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was really really deep. So anyway, to make this short, I, I had him on one of these follow up uh, interviews, and um, and he had he had some really cool stuff to say about about back in the day, and and you know about his the awareness that that kind of Jameson demanded, you know, from the artists, simply because he was just laying it down so well, right? And they knew, okay, this is the dude, and and we got to respect that. So uh, with all of that, keeping all of that in mind, um, Sue Williams, oh yeah, one thing I wanted to plug, and that is you actually have a video out on the Maestra uh, site That's and right. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a, a link to that in the description of this video um, but very quickly just uh, give us an idea of what that is all about I did a presentation for the maestra organization on mm -hmm. uh, a, a view from the bottom subbing uh, on on in the rhythm section on on bass um, on a Broadway show and um, uh, you know, ain't too proud uh, was heavily on my mind when I did it, but I I, I talked through a lot of things we talked through today and mm -hmm. give the, it's there's a a slideshow presentation I put together so it has uh, pictures and images and and the timeline for you know steps to take and subbing so hopefully um, you know uh, it, it got good reviews and hopefully it helps a lot of people to. Um, be better subs and uh, when I need a sub and, and uh, you know, I'll, there might be more people out there who, yeah. who are strong with it, you know, next time yeah. you need a sub and everything. So it is um, a skill that I'm thankful to have had the opportunity to, to develop. And it, I, like you said earlier, it, it helps everybody um, with every musical situation they're in. That's true. That's very every true. Gig, so. All right. So that's that's on the Maestra website. You can find that video there. And once again, I'm going to link it in the description of this video as well. So people can check it out. Maestra website has a bunch of really interesting uh, workshops and videos. Uh, I know that I'm taking one on um, uh, what is it on how to make a podcast because, yes. you know, that's that's interesting yeah. to me, you know, especially now. Um, but um, it's they have some good information there and it's 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 really well presented it's not too expensive and you just buy the information and can, you can sit with it i dig that i i like taking my time with stuff like that so anyway sue williams thank you so much for making yourself available thank today you. i really appreciate your time your insight um and as i said you know stay safe stay sane out there Let's hope that, you know, we get to we get to do this, uh, you know, in the not too distant future. Let me put it this way. Yes, we will. We will. Uh, we will be back and and uh, long live ain't too proud and all the Broadway shows. And oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Take care. Thank soon. you, George. All Thank right. You. Bye bye.